in this video we are going to learn about feature engineering techniques on titanic machine learning from disaster dataset you can download the dataset from your uh, kaggle website or you can directly use this url and the uh, dataset would be downloaded so what is feature engineering uh, so feature engineering is the process of selecting manipulating and transforming grow data into features that can be used by our machine learning model in order to make machine learning work well on new tasks it might be necessary to design and train better features. Feature engineering in simple terms is act of converting raw observations into desired features using statistical or machine learning approaches. So uh, we can say that the goal of feature engineering is simplifying and speeding up data transformations while also enhancing model accuracy. Now this diagram is very important. If you see, we have a raw data. What we'll do, we'll apply feature engineering on this raw data to extract these features. Now these features will be used for modeling and are supposed to enhance our model accuracy. The better the accuracy, the more reliable our model is for predictions. Now let's look at importance of feature engineering. Feature engineering is a very important step in machine learning. Feature engineering refers to the process of uh, designing artificial features into an algorithm that we know. So, this feature, these artificial features are then used by that algorithm in order to improve its performance or in other words, reap better results. Data scientists spend most of their time with the data and it becomes important to make models accurate. That's why we can see that. So in this pie chart, time spent by data scientists, uh, we have maximum of time for cleaning and organizing the data, collecting data sets, mining data, and then we have a rest of time for training sets, refining algorithms, and some other tasks. Now, if we go to see then, according to a survey in Forbes, data scientists spend 80% of their time on data preparation, right? So as we see earlier as well, uh, that we have 3% of time for building training sets. We have 60% of time for cleaning and organizing data. The 19% of time is in collecting data sets. 9% of time is for mining data for patterns, 4% is for refining algorithms, and 5% is for other tasks. So it is very clear that data scientists spend more than 80% time on, on uh, data preparation. And it is also clear that why data scientists spend more than 80% time on data preparation because feature engineering is important uh, task to increase the accuracy of our model. So when feature engineering activities are done correctly, the resulting data set is optimal and contains all of the important factors that affect the business problem. As a result of this data sets, the most accurate predictive models and the most useful insights are produced. So list of techniques that we are going to discuss in this assignment are imputation, handling outliers, feature creation, binning, variable transformation, scaling, and one-hot encoding. So let's start with feature engineering techniques on titanic data set. Now, before that, I just want to show you this meme. So this is uh, data before and after pre-processing. So here we can see that how the data before pre-processing signifies the person which is very messy. Now let us start focusing on coding path. So first of all, we will import important libraries which are numpy and pandas. Right. Uh, now we are going to uh, import the data set and read it. So we will use a URL method. So here I have the URL and copy link address. So uh, let us say TF is equal to PD read CSV URL and we would also print the header of our data frame which is by tf.head method right so yeah this is how our titanic data set looks like so we have passengers id survived p class name sex gender age then this is sibling and other family members then the ticket then fare then cabin and embarked so we have this all different columns and uh, the data set uh, looks quite messy because we can see uh, this missing values from uh, just from the header, right? 
So, uh, and this is uh, the this survived is our target column. Uh, this is going to be target column. If we are going to make machine learning model, then this would be something that we would be predicting on our data set. So let's move forward and focus on feature engineering. Now, imputation. So when it comes to preparing your data for machine learning, missing values are one of the most typical issues as we saw earlier uh, that in uh, cabin uh, column. Human errors, data flow, interruptions, privacy concerns, and other factors could all contribute to missing values. Missing values have an impact on the performance of ML models for whatever cause. The main goal of imputation is to handle these missing values, and uh, that's why imputation is a technique used for replacing the uh, missing data with some substitute value to retain most of the data or information of the data set. To check the null values in our data set, we would do df.isNull which will give uh, whether a particular entry is null or not. And now to bring up the sum uh, to count as a whole, we would use dot sum. So it would give us the total sum of missing values from each column as you can see. All right. Now what we can do as first approach is dropping rows with null values. The easiest and quickest approach to do a missing data problem is dropping the offending entries. Now this is an acceptable solution if you are confident that the missing data in data set is missing at random and if the number of data, uh, data points we have access to is sufficiently high that dropping some of them will not cause us losing information in the data for the models we build. So dropping too much data is also dangerous. For example, for this titanic data set, if we might not want to simply blindly drop everything as this, uh, this would result in very few samples left as we already have very small data. So there will be nothing left for machine learning model to learn from. Now, we, uh, if we go and see the pros of dropping rows with null values is that complete removal of uh, data with uh, missing values results in robust and highly accurate model and deleting a particular row or column with no specific information is better since it does not have a high weightage. But if we go and see the cons, then we would have a loss of information in data and it works poorly if the percentage of missing value is uh, very high. So we also have pros that uh, missing values are removed and that too without uh, much effort but the cons is that uh, we would lose a lot of data and maybe our uh, model would work poorly because uh, high missing values uh, are not acceptable. Now let us look at how to drop the missing values. For that we would just simply new data frame is equal to data frame dot drop any and using this method we would drop all the missing values now if we check uh, uh, how many null values are there then it would show zero as expected but if we compare that what is the length of uh, our new data frame compared to our old data frame then we would get our uh, length of new data frame is only 183 while our original data frame had 891 uh, rows right so we have lost a lot of data and this is not enough for us to uh, to build a very robust and accurate model so now let's see another approach which is drop the column when we have a lot of missing values say more than a certain threshold we can easily drop the column Right? So let us see it in our data set. Suppose we choose our threshold to be 0.75. So what does this mean? Uh, this means that if any column has more than 75% of milling, uh, missing values, then we can drop it. I have written the code. So let's look at the code. So the threshold is set at 0.75. Now, uh, what we'll do is df is equal to df of now we are choosing the columns and while choosing the columns, we have also a condition which is we would only choose those columns whose uh, uh, mean of uh, total null, uh, null values is less than our threshold. That means that only column which have null values less than our threshold would be selected. That means that the columns which have null values less than 75% are going to be included in our data frame. All right, so now we can see that uh, this is how our new data frame would look like and uh, we have missed uh, one of the column, right? So we have missed cabin column. We can see now that cabin column is dropped at it had 687 missing values, which is a lot for any column and we do it would have affect the performance of our model. 
right now let us move towards new topic which is numerical imputation imputation is a more preferable option rather than dropping because it preserves the data size however there is an important selection of what you impute to the missing values we suggest beginning with considering a possible default value of the missing values in the column for example if you have a column that only has one and an a then it is likely that the na rows correspond to zero for another example if you have a column that shows the customer visit count in last month the missing values might be replaced with zero as long as you think that it is sensible solution in other cases the best imputation way is to use the medians of the column as the averages of the columns are sensitive to the outlier values while medians are more solid in this respect and this is very important point which you should remember that uh, when it's convenient we should use medians and try to avoid doing imputation using averages let's see this with respect to the example of each column of our data so let's perform imputation df of h df of h now to perform imputation we will use fill na and would substitute all the missing values with media now let's check yeah now you can see that now we have substitute the age column with the media we could have also filled this column with mean or mode but median fits better considering this column whenever needed we can also apply mean or mode to fill the missing values but as i said earlier those are prone to outliers so outliers can be considered as this points which are specifically very high so suppose our normal data uh, lies around this so our median would be around uh, something 25 to 30 but our average would go quite higher which is uh, it would be around 40 or maybe more because we have these points which are affecting our total average now check the missing values so we would do is df dot is null dot sum all right so here now we can see that each column has no missing values and we also didn't lose any of our data moving forward categorical imputation so replacing the missing values with maximum occurred value in a column is a good option as well for handling categorical columns so what does this mean is that when we have categorical columns then if we want to replace the missing values then we would mostly use maximum occurred value in that column but if you think that values in a column are distributed normally and there is not a dominant value Imputing a category like other might be more sensible because in such case your imputation is likely to converge a random selection. So it means that when in a column, a categorical column, when all the categories are distributed uniformly, so it means that there is no dominant class and each class have almost equal number of uh, accounts, then we can impute uh, the missing values by creating a new category which is other. But for now, we can safely impute the categorical column with that dominant category df of mbug which is our categorical column and it is having missing values but also a dominant category fill in it with df of mbug dot value counts dot idx max and we would do in place is equal to true because we want to substitute it automatically and when we run this we'll check the null values overall yes we can see that there are no null values now in mbark and we have no null values left in our whole data set so that was uh, imputation for us now let us move towards to handling outliers Outlier handling is a technique for removing outliers from a data set. An outlier is a data point that differs significantly from other observations. For example, you can see here 
so when we have a general trend which looks like this but we have two points which are so different which are irregular from our normal data then those points are called outliers outlier handling can be used on a variety of scales to produce a more accurate data representation this has an impact on the model's performance depending on the model the effect could be large or minimal for example linear regression is particularly prone to outliers this procedure uh, this procedure should be completed prior to model training. The various methods of handling outliers include removal. Outlier containing entries are deleted from the distribution. However, if there are outliers across numeric, uh, numerous variables, this strategy may result in a big chunk of data sheet being missed. So, replacing values. Alternatively, the outliers could be handled as a missing values and replaced with the suitable imputation, capping, using an arbitrary value or a value from a variable distribution to replace the maximum and minimum values and uh, discrete uh, discretization discretization is the process of converting continuous variables models and functions into discrete ones this is accomplished by constructing a series of continuous intervals or beans that span the range of our desired variable model and function so don't worry if you didn't understand till now we will implement all these methods uh, using code so let's just see what were our, the methods that we learn. So first is removal, either we totally remove it, other is replacing values. We take it uh, as missing values only and replace uh, with suitable imputation, other is capping. What we can do is uh, we can substitute the outliers values with uh, some maximum and minimum values that we want to keep and other is discretization. So what we can do is we can convert these continuous variables into discrete one, which is also called binning and we would look that ahead in the assignment. So let us look at standard deviation based method to detect outliers. In this method, uh, we considered all points with values more than or less than a particular factor, which let's take three generally. So three times the standard deviation from mean, uh, and those points are considered as outliers. Right. So this is kind of a, this is a distribution of our data. Then uh, three standard deviations from mean would look like something like this. So this is our mean, and this is one standard deviation. This is second standard deviation and this is third standard deviation. So any points which are outside of this and outside of this are considered as outliers. So let's uh, check the length of uh, data set first. Length of TF. Now let us set the factor and, uh, and put the upper limit which would be DF of our column we would take fair as our column dot mean plus and our lower limit would be df of fair dot mean minus for factor into df of fair and standard deviation of it right so we have first initiate our factor which generally is taken as 3 and then what we are doing we are putting an upper limit so our upper limit would be uh, our mean plus 3 times the standard deviation value and our lower limit would be our mean minus 3 times the standard deviation so whatever values lies between them would be considered as uh, our distribution and uh, whatever values crosses them which are not in our uh, this range of upper limit and lower limit are considered outliers. So now let's eliminate our outliers. So I have written the code. So now our new data frame would look like. So this is how I uh, eliminate the outlier. Uh, so we are taking uh, the values uh, in which the values of data frame uh, with column fair are less than the upper limit and values of fair column which are greater than upper limit. So now if we go to check the difference, then we can see that our new data frame has been reduced by 20 samples. So this is one of the method in which we use standard division based method to detect outliers. Now let's move forward and look at capping the outliers method. So another option for handling outliers is to cap them instead of dropping. So in capping the outliers, we don't uh, we don't miss any of our data, we keep the original data size and instead of dropping them, we give them a cap. So let's check the extremes for mean and max of our fair column. 
which would be df of fair dot me and df of fair dot max yeah so our minimum value is 0 and maximum value is 512 now in capping the outliers method what we do uh, we do is uh, we set the values of a lower and higher percentile so let's understand uh, the concept of quantile first so a quantile is called a percentile when it is based on 0 to 100 scale so the 0 0.95 quantile is equivalent to 95 percentile and it says that 95 percent of sample is below its value and 5 percent is above it so what we'll do is we will set upper limit of 0 0.95 quantile and 0 0.05 quantile for lower limit or for the outliers meaning that now any sample below or above the limit is an outlier and when we encounter any outlier we would substitute its value with our upper limit if the outlier lies above the upper limit and substitute its value with our lower limit if the outlier lies below lower limit so let's look at the code part upper limit would be df of fair dot quantile and we would keep it 0 0.95 as our upper limit would be equivalent to 95 percentile and lower limit df of fair dot quantile of 0 0.05 now ahead what we'll do is so wherever our data frame would have of the value of fair column greater than our upper limit then those values of our frame would be substituted by the upper limit and similarly wherever uh, the value in fair column in our data frame is less than lower limit then those values of our fair column would be replaced with lower limit now let's check the extremes of our fair column yeah. now you can see that it has been changed and now it's 7.225 and 112 and if we go and check the length of our data set then we can see that it has remained same and our data size is not affected so this was all about handling the outliers now let us move towards feature creation so let's understand feature creation first for that we have to understand that pre-processing is all about changing raw data into something that will help us to improve the performance of our model but now you must be thinking how can we create our own feature and will it help increase the performance of my model now creating features involves identifying the variables that will be most useful in the product uh, in the predictive model so this is a subjective process that requires human intervention and creativity now if i have to give an example so you can see that in data set if we see for a person in record uh, our sip sp column tells about the number of siblings or spouses abroad the titanic and parch tells about parents and children abroad the titanic perhaps people traveling alone did better or on the other hand perhaps if you had family you might have risked your life looking for them or even giving up a space to them in a life mode. so that's why seeing all these scenarios feature creation is the process of constructing new features from existing existing data to train a machine learning model and this requires uh, human intervention because it almost comes with domain knowledge so that's why sometimes creating features are most useful in predictive model and uh, let's uh, implement our above statement on this data and understand it better let's say i have to create a new column which is family size so my family size column would be df of sib sp and plus df of Pouch. so we know that what this uh, sip sp column means it tells number of siblings and spouses uh, uh, abroad the titanic and pouch tell us, uh, uh, tells about the parents and children abroad the titanic so we can say that the family size of that person is uh, given by uh, how many siblings or spouses and uh, in addition to them whatever uh, how, how many parents and children were there with them let me check the header of our data frame now we can see that one new column is built which gives how many or uh, what is the size of the family of a particular person and this may help us to detect whether the person survived or not because as discussed earlier if someone may have family then their chances of surviving are maybe less because they are more concerned about their family members to survive now let's understand benning 
So binning is done to create bins for continuous numerical variables where they are converted to categorical variables. Uh, data binning is an important data preprocessing method and it is used to minimize the effects of small observation errors which tends to improve the model performance applying domain knowledge. So the original data values are divided into small intervals known as the bins and then they are replaced by a general value calculated for that bin. This has, smooth, uh, this has smoothing effect on the input data and may also reduce the chances of overfitting in case of small data sets. Now this binning also helps in avoiding the effects of outlier as we are grouping them into one special group. So we have already seen that uh, previously that the binning was one of the method to avoid the outliers. Now if you see this, so we have a continuous value and when we perform discretization then this continuous variables is now transformed into discrete values. Suppose we want to perform binning on age groups in our data set because more than numerical age, what kind of people based on their age uh, groups like old children or adult is more important for us to know in order to understand what patterns are going on to build the model. Right, so maybe like children and old were given priority to sit in life code, so their chances of survival are more. So let's see how we can use binning in such cases. So what we are exactly going to do is, if age is less than 18, then uh, categorize them as children. If age is greater than 80 but less than 50, then we are going to uh, give them adult. And if age is greater than 50, then categorize as old. So let's perform it by coding df of age group is equal to ad dot cut df of age comma bins bins equal to 0 and 18 and 18 to 50 above that let's say 100 so what we have done is we have created three bins so one would contain only values which are between 0 to 18 other would include only values which are between 18 to 50 and other would include values which are between 50 to 100 and we are going to give them labels children adult and old and we would also check how it performed so yes so we can see that there are around 688 samples which are of uh, adult people there are 139 children and 64 old people in our data set now if you want to plot the bar graph uh, showing different age groups then df of age group dot value counts dot plot bar now as you can see that we have plot the bar graph for uh, counts of uh, age category people so this is how we perform binning now let's move forward and see variable transformation so before knowing variable transformation Let's see what is a normal distribution. Normal distribution is widely used probability and statistical concept where mean, median and mode of such distribution have the same value and it can be defined with just two parameters, mean and variance, right? So now a normal distribution looks like something this. So our uh, when we plot the data from our distribution, then our, our distribution plot would look like something this where mean is our equal to median and median is equal to mod. So our mean value is also the median value and it's also the mod value of our distribution. And this has symmetrical sides. Some machine learning models like linear and logistic regression assume that variables follow a normal distribution. So more likely variables in real data sets will follow a skewed distribution. A skewed distribution is neither symmetric nor normal because the data points cluster more towards one side of the scale than the other creating a curve where there is no such mirror imaging. This is how an ideal distribution should look like. 
various uh, sometimes it is uh, skewed left which is also called negatively skewed and sometimes it is skewed right which is called positively skewed but we want a distribution which is symmetric which looks like this because the because if we have symmetric uh, distribution then uh, this kind of distribution increases the model's accuracy if a model is not normally distributed sometimes it is possible to find a mathematical transformation for such skewed distributions so that the transform variable is normal normally distributed uh, variables many time boost the machine learning algorithm performance so now we are going to look at uh, if our variable is not normally distributed then what are the different methods that we can use to transform variable into a normal a normally distributed variable so the most the most commonly used methods are logarithm transformation square, square root transformation reciprocal transformation and exponential transformation let's see the coding part now so we are going to check the distribution for each edge column so what we'll do is tf each dot plot dot test right so we can see that uh, this is left skewed distribution so it is a negatively symmetric so now we'll apply transformation technique and compare it with the before and after transformation result so here we will apply a logarithmic transformation so df of age log and np dot log of df of age and now we will see what it has and now we'll see how it affected our age column we can observe here that the logarithmic transformation did not produce a normal distribution for age column instead it created a right skewed distribution so what we will do we will apply square root transformation df of age square is given by df of each star so after applying square root transformation so what we have done is df of uh, age with square root transformation is given by df of age and uh, its whole power to the half which is also equivalent to square root of df of age so we will look at So now we can see that uh, this is better but not perfect as it is still slightly right or positively skewed. It is better than before but it's still not reliable. Let's apply reciprocal transformation. So what we'll do is df of age reciprocal is equal to 1 by df of age. Now we will also check the distribution h r p dot plot dot test so the transformation was not useful at all and it actually made the distribution even worse than before so we will move with uh, exponential transformation uh, so let's try exponential transformation I have given exponent of 4 by 5 to the age column. Yes, now this one is best of all the transformations above and it is actually a normal distribution for our variable and this is the most reliable one. So now this is how we have seen that how we can apply different transformations and check which transformations brings our distribution closer to normal distribution because the more closer our distribution, to, uh, our distribution is to normal distribution, the better accuracy we will get for our model. Now let's move forward with scaling. So uh, feature scaling is one of the most universal and difficult problems in machine learning yet it's one of the most important things to get right. 
In most cases, the numerical features of the data set do not have a certain range and they differ from each other. So in real life, we don't expect age and income columns to have same range. But from the machine learning point of view, how these two columns can be compared, right? So due to higher range, machine learning models create bias towards income column and we want to examine each feature equally. Uh, so if not scale, the feature with a higher value range starts dominating when calculating distance. After a scaling operation, the continuous features become similar in term of range. Although this step isn't required for many algorithms, it is still a good idea to do so. So what, what is feature scaling actually? So when we have two different columns with uh, varying ranges, for example, one is age and one is income. So income would income is something that would range in something thousands while age is something which would range in uh, one to hundred, right? But so what happens is that income column has a high range uh, compared to the age column. That's why sometimes machine learning models would create a bias towards income. Let's see what are the common ways of uh, feature scaling. So there are two common ways. First is normalization. So all values are scaled in specific range between zero and one via normalizations or also called min-max normalization. So this modification has no influence on features distribution. However, it does worsen the effects of outliers due to lower standard deviations. So when there are outliers, we have to take care of what methods we are going to use. So as a result, it is, advi it is advised that outliers are dealt first before using normalization. So what do we do in normalization? We will, we will apply this formula, right? But when there are outliers, then our S, X max would create problem for us. So that's why outliers are supposed to be dealt first before using this method. So let's perform normalization on the H column. So DF of H is equal to DF of H minus DF of H dot mean divided by df of h dot max minus df of h dot mean. So you can see that we have implemented the formula directly and let us see what results does it bring. df of h dot head yes so we have performed a normalization on edge column and we can see the effect on our edge column now let's look at the standardization standardization or also known as z score normalization is process of scaling values while accounting for standard deviation so what we do here is if the standard deviation of features differs the range of those features will likewise differ so the effect of outliers in the characteristics is reduced as a result. To arrive at distribution with a zero mean and one variance, all the data points are subtracted from mean and the result divided by distributions various. So using this method, we don't have to worry about outliers because their effect is already reduced. And again, we will just implement the formula and see the transformation. So here we'll use the fair column. df of fair is equal to df of fair minus df of fair dot mean and divided by df of fair dot standard deviation and let's see the effect dot add yeah, we can see the transformation is done. So we have looked how feature scaling is important. Having different ranges across the columns of our data set creates bias towards columns with higher ranges when we are performing machine learning algorithm. So to reduce this, uh, to reduce this bias and to remove this bias, we use feature scaling and ensure that each and every column is treated equally when performing machine learning algorithms. Next, let us look at one hot encoding. Categorical data are variables that contain label values rather than numerical values, right? Example, a pet variable can have values like dog and cat. 
various a uh, color variable can have values which are red green and blue some algorithms can work with categorical data directly but many machine learning algorithms cannot operate on labeled data directly they require all input variables and output variables to be numeric this means that categorical data must be converted to numerical form so how to convert categorical data to numerical data we have one hot encoding for that so one hot encoding changes your categorical data which is challenging to understand for algorithms to a numerical format and enables you to group your categorical data without losing any information so if you have n distinct values or classes in the categorical column it is enough to map them into n minus 1 binary columns so one hot encoding creates new binary columns indicating the presence of each possible value from the original data the categorical value is removed and a new binary variable is added for each unique categorical value let's see the example of color column we have used in uh, example what happens when we apply one hot encoding to this categorical column right so we have understood that if there is a categorical column in our data set then for our machine learning algorithms to understand and use those columns we have to convert them into numerical columns so in order to convert them into numerical columns we will use one hot encoding so we can see that this is before and after effect of one hot encoding so this is our column color which contains categorical values so if we see here then uh, if the categorical column has a value red then the color red column would have one and rest of them would have zero zero similarly for blue if we have blue then the color blue column have one and others would have zero and similarly for green so this is how when the values in the original data were red blue and green we create a separate column for each possible value and then when the original value was red we put a one in the red column so now we will use pandas get dummies method to make this task very easy and uh, let's see how we can apply one hot encoding on our categorical columns using pd dot get dummies method so our categorical columns in the data set are embarked and sex column so we will apply one hot encoding df is equal to pd dot get dummies and uh, our data frame and the columns that we want to perform and the columns on which we want to perform and now we will print the header of our data frame now we can see that we uh, one hot encoding is successfully implemented so you can see that there is each separate column for each category in our categorical columns so we have sex female and sex male we have embark c embark q and embark s so this was one hot encoding and congratulations you have learned feature engineering so this meme shows that how much important feature engineering is and we used titanic machine learning data set for understanding feature engineering module